Can't wait to hit up the farmer's market this weekend? Well, hold your horses. Keep watching to learn some simple tactics that'll save you time and money the next time you head to the local farmer's market. Visit the farmer's market at peak hours and it could spell disaster. Lines for vendors are long, walkways are crowded, and offerings are picked over. It can be tempting to head to your local farmer's market whenever, but the best times to arrive are either first thing or at closing time. The early bird gets the worm is applicable advice for the farmer's market. There are advantages to being one of the first people there. You get your pick of anything at the produce stalls, and popular items haven't sold out yet. The baked goods and loaves of bread are fresher, and there are fewer people with strollers, dogs, or small children to maneuver around. It can be challenging to wake up early on the weekends, but if you can muster up the motivation, getting to the farmer's market early will ensure success. Luckily, you may still get to sleep in a little. For an example of one city's hours, most farmer's markets in the New York City area open at 8 o'clock in the morning. A good backup option is getting there just before closing. If you choose this, some items may be marked down by vendors. Also, there may be fewer people at the market. Unfortunately, some items may be sold out, and there aren't as many advantages for getting there last, but it's still better than the middle of the day. It's pretty crowded. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, road traffic, a lot of foot traffic. If you don't bring a bag to the farmer's market, it can be worse than forgetting a bag for the grocery store. There may not be a backup bag waiting for you. You could end up lugging around a watermelon to and fro, and pro tip? Watermelons get heavy after a while. Even more disastrous yet, those items could use a wash, filling your cute little handbag with your produce soil. Avoid these mishaps by bringing your own bags. Most are medium to large sized, similar to that of a beach tote. This size allows you to fit a few different heads of lettuce or bottles of unpasteurized milk in there. In addition to size, check for material. Woven bags with thick fabrics like straw are strong enough to hold even the heaviest vegetables. Larger, reusable tote bags are another good option. These bags can easily be stuffed into whatever you're using to carry your wallet and keys, then expanded to hold your farmer's market loot. Not only will you be able to carry everything from the farmer's market, but you can even help out the earth a little by using them. Totes are better for the environment than using plastic produce bags, as they reduce plastic waste. Forgetting to bring cash is a rookie mistake. At the same time, it's one of those things we all fall victim to every once in a while. However, if you do this at the farmer's market, you might not be able to get anything. Not all vendors accept credit, debit, Venmo, or other forms of electronic payment. However, most vendors are likely to take cash. How much cash to bring depends on the shopper, but there are a few ways to predict how much you will need. Most people won't spend as much as they would during a normal grocery trip. However, comparing farmer's markets to your grocery store won't always come out the same way. Sometimes the stuff at the farmer's market is cheaper. Other times, production costs and the smaller scale of growth that happens on local organic farms force vendors to charge more. No matter how much cash you bring to the market, you can ensure success by bringing certain bills and coins. Bring ones and fives to help pay for smaller items. Bring small change to be able to pay the exact amount. This is not only convenient for some vendors, but necessary. Even as recently as January 2022, the COVID-19 pandemic has limited the number of coins available across the country. Farmers markets can get crowded. Go to one on the weekends and it could be impossible to get around. Go to a weekend market during peak hours, and you might leave without getting anything you wanted because it's so busy. Sometimes, though, the time of day that you're at the market isn't the problem. It's you. People can get stuck in the flow of a farmer's market and make the experience terrible for everyone else. To avoid dirty looks and shoulder checks, you should be mindful of the space around you. One TripAdvisor reviewer described the problem of lacking self-awareness while shopping, saying this about their experience at a local farmer's market. The patrons are generally insufferable. Lots of group shopping and small spaces, too many giant strollers, and tons of looky-loos. This person wasn't the only one experiencing a crowd problem at their market. A Reddit user also commented, saying, I can't stand how crowded farmers markets are. I know I should like them, but the whole experience is too stressful. We can all do our part to reduce crowd problems at farmers markets. Leave the big strollers at home. Better yet, don't bring your kids. Be mindful of how long you're standing in front of a stall. Are you going to buy something? If not, keep moving. All of this will help to keep the flow of people moving the next time you visit the farmers market. Dogs at farmers markets are controversial. There are the people who don't want them there, like one Reddit user who explained, I don't love dogs at the farmers markets mostly because there are already enough distracted people milling about. 
Adding dogs on leashes to the environment makes things more chaotic, the person said. On the other hand, some people are upset when dogs aren't allowed. In the United States, there isn't a federal law banning all animals from outdoor food markets. Some places, like California, do have a statewide ban against bringing your dog. According to ABC10, it's a health code violation to do so. There are some exceptions, such as with law enforcement animals, but overall, leave your pet at home if you're going to a California market. Bring your pet to a farmer's market outside of this one state and it will probably be allowed. Even if it's legal, however, some patrons and vendors may not appreciate it. As the Chicago Tribune explains, people are not only worried about excited dogs making their way through the crowd, barking and possibly getting distracted by other dogs, but getting a little too close to food products. All tension can be avoided by not bringing your dog the next time you head to the farmer's market. Haggling is sometimes a great idea for flea markets or yard sales. You can negotiate prices there by all means. Maybe those products are used or are a bit of a burden to the seller. On the other hand, vendors at the farmer's market don't usually have the same mindset. You shouldn't always try to haggle at the farmer's market. How much is this? $1.19? I'll give you a quarter. <laughs> Get the hell out of here! Markets don't typically have rules about this, but it can be frowned upon. One commenter on the EG forums explained how it comes across poorly, writing, "...it just seems disrespectful to me. Negotiating for a new car? Yeah. For an ear of corn? No." You wouldn't haggle for prices at a grocery store, so don't do it at the farmer's market. The vendor put labor into growing that food and bringing it to you for sale. Your shopping process is likely to be more peaceful if you avoid negotiating food prices with stall operators. There can be some instances where haggling may go over more smoothly, and the end of the day is one of them. Prices may be more flexible as vendors may be trying to clear out their stock before the day is done. However, it's still considered more polite to simply wait for farmers to lower their prices rather than eagerly suggesting your own. Sampling at the farmer's market is acceptable. Vendors are usually excited to share a little bit of free stuff with patrons. You want sample small batch Amazonian maple syrup? Sure. Plus, with the COVID-19 pandemic more under control in the U.S., samples are usually available at grocery stores like Costco and Trader Joe's. We aren't afraid to share food anymore, but still, vendors don't want to give too much away. You should sample in moderation at the farmer's market. Feel free to take as many samples as you want, but do not take them all from the same stall. Vendors offer tastings of products with the hope that someone will try them and buy something. If you like how something tastes and want more, buy it. If the product is on the expensive side, buy a small amount of it. You will probably be happy that you did. Also, as Modern Farmer explains, you should ask first before taking something off a vendor's table and putting it in your mouth. If the stall operator is offering it to you, go ahead. If not, just say something before taking the sample. After saying thank you, your work is pretty much done. You don't have to stand there and say you love the item if you don't like it. On the other hand, if you hate how something tastes, maybe keep that to yourself as well. What do you think, Larry? Eh. What do you mean, eh? Yeah. Vendors take caution when handing out free samples. They are required to follow certain health and safety codes to prevent the spread of disease. And stall operators wash their hands. Similarly, you should exercise caution while handling farmer's market produce. For the sake of the vendors, you should approach the touchable products with caution. At stalls, try to handle what's on the table with care. Do not haphazardly pick up food that a vendor is trying to sell. Don't bruise the produce by dropping it or grabbing it too roughly. For the sake of other patrons, you should try to remain as clean as possible throughout the day. Many people will go through the market and come in contact with the same foods. As such, you should be washing or sanitizing your hands between stalls. This can prevent food contamination that could create illness or allergic reactions. For the sake of yourself, you should practice food safety around fruits and vegetables. Although they may seem more harmless than raw meat, produce can also carry disease. For the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, some of the most common produce-borne illnesses include E. coli, listeria, and salmonella. You can avoid getting these by steering clear of bruised or damaged items, washing your hands and your produce, and separating fruits and veggies from raw animal products. Your whole experience at the farmer's market can be blighted by a negative interaction with a vendor. So, do your best to avoid offending stall owners as much as possible. If you can get a vendor to like you, the whole day of shopping can be improved. There are plenty of ways to get to know a farmer's market vendor, and consistency can help. 
One Reddit user said of their own experience, The more often you go, the more comfortable you feel to just chat with them. I usually go to the same vendor and the familiarity helps. At the bare minimum, if you greet them with a smile and mind your manners, you're likely not going to make anyone mad. And it's always a good idea to be mindful of the farmer's market rules of conduct. By rules of conduct, do you mean that wooden sign you made that says, Peas be kind to others? To bond with a stall operator, it's good to ask them questions. How old is your farm? How long has it been there? How should I cook this product? The farmer's market is also a unique opportunity to find out more about how your food was grown. Were there pesticides used on this item? When was it harvested? What's in season right now? All of this could potentially bring you and your vendor closer together. In turn, you could get better deals, more personal cooking advice, and even specialized recommendations in the future. One of the biggest pitfalls of the farmer's market is limiting yourself. You spend too much time at one stall or you get tired after eating all the free samples. So you say this product is known as fudge? Yes, just like it was last week. You end up only buying produce from two different vendors. At the end of the day, you are walking out of the market wistfully looking at all the other stalls you wish you bought stuff from. The way to avoid this is by taking a lap. By first walking around the entire perimeter of the market, you can see all the places available. You can see what catches your eye and what doesn't. Then you can head to the vendors which seem the most interesting to you. Also, don't spend more time at a particular booth than you want. If you've already sampled something and don't like it, time to leave. Simply tell the vendor thank you and move on. If you like it, quickly purchase the item and go to other vendors. If buying from the farmer's market is an investment in your local economy, then buying from as many vendors as possible is an even bigger boost to the local food movement in your area. Farmer's market produce is known for being extraordinarily fresh. That probably means it's freshly harvested whenever you may go. However, knowing ahead of time which products are in season can ensure the utmost success during your shopping trip. In-season fruits and vegetables are good for your local economy and taste better than out-of-season produce. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has a guide explaining what produce is associated with each season. Spring is known for foods like asparagus, carrots, and fennel. Summer is associated with vegetables like tomatoes and green beans. Popular summer fruits include blackberries, raspberries, peaches, and plums. Foods that are ideal in fall include apples, pears, pumpkin, and squash. Winter produce is more scarce, but you can still find good citrus fruits like lemons, limes, grapefruit, and oranges during this time of year. These are only a few examples of what is going to look best at the farmer's market, depending on what time of year you go grocery shopping there. What's in season changes depending on what region or even state you are located in. However, some websites like Seasonal Food Guide will help you search what produce is in season in any U.S. state during any month of the year. A common mistake many people make is not making a list of things you really need before going to the store. This can often lead to coming home with everything we don't need and nothing that we do. Be shopping! Did you buy anything? A piston engine! What'd you buy that for? Ooh, it was a bargain! Planning your trip is important when going to the grocery store, and the farmer's market is no different. We can often make the mistake of leaving the farmer's market having bought too much. We might get so much produce that we couldn't possibly cook it all before some of it begins to go bad. Other times, we may end up with fruits or vegetables we are unfamiliar with. This leaves us guessing what to make with our farmer's market haul leftovers. To avoid this problem, you should plan what meals you'd like to make ahead of time. That doesn't mean you have to put creativity on hold. There are plenty of plant-based recipes to inspire your trips to the farmer's market. Salads are an obvious way to start. These dishes use kale, arugula, or different types of lettuce. Vegetable sandwiches are also good. Put those tomatoes, peppers, or mushrooms in there. There's also soup. Gazpachos are a good choice for those warm farmer's market months. Just have some gazpacho, Howie. Oh, my gazpacho soup is here. Vegetarian quesadillas, tacos, enchiladas, and more are just a few more inventive farmer's market recipes to try. They also are great for making big batches, so you could even host a dinner party to get rid of the rest of your produce. For an additional hack, take note of which fruits and vegetables last the longest. That way, if you can't use something immediately, you'll have time to use it before it begins to rot. Fruits with impressive longevity include apples, limes, and oranges. Likewise, vegetables with staying power include cabbage, carrots, beets, sweet potato, and cauliflower. Identifying ripe fruit is another issue that people have. If you don't know when an avocado is ready to eat, you could end up cutting into either a mushy mess or a stringy rock, neither of which is preferable to eat. 
Learning what ripe fruits look like can help you pick out fresh produce at the farmer's market. Ah, tastes like sand. Like sand? Oh, that, that pear's not ripe, dude. According to WebMD, ripe apples should be firm without any soft spots, pineapples should be slightly firm and smell sweet, raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries should look plump and not be leaking any juice, mangoes and bananas should be left to ripen on the counter, when either fruit is a bit soft, that's when they're getting ready to eat, oranges should be shiny and the skin should appear thin, leave them in the refrigerator until they feel heavy for their size, then you'll know they're ripe. In addition to the above ways to identify ripe fruit, the best produce has a deep color and lacks bruises, as this indicates freshness. Of course, you don't always want to buy fruit when it's already ripe. There may be some items you want to eat in a few days. Just plan ahead so you don't end up wasting food. The ugly produce movement is controversial. Some people think it takes food that otherwise would go to food banks and resells it for a profit. Other opponents think the issue of food waste has always been with the customer, not the farmers. However, you can contribute to ending food waste while shopping at the farmer's market. Don't be afraid to buy uglier fruits and vegetables than would normally end up in your reusable tote bag. There are a few ways to tell if a food is simply ugly or inedible. You don't have to force yourself to eat a bruised piece of fruit. However, bruises do not always indicate that a food has gone bad. For example, bruised bananas can mean ripeness, but bruised apples can mean they've passed their expiration date. Telling the difference requires learning a little bit about each piece of produce out there. However, there's an even easier way to buy ugly foods at the farmer's market. Unattractive foods that are most likely safe to eat are those lumpy-looking lemons, those carrots which have split at the bottom. Also safe to eat are oranges that have opened up at one end or pears that look like they're slumped over in a chair. In most cases, if the skin of these fruits and vegetables is still glowing and deeply vibrant in color, you can eat them. Produce isn't the only thing to get at the farmer's market. You typically come across several stalls devoted to cured meats, bread, aged cheeses, honey, and jam. There are even non-food products to choose from, such as soaps, candles, and other beauty products. You're missing out if you leave the farmer's market with only fruits and vegetables. With those non-produce items, you can expect to pay a little more than you would for your pre-grated tub of Parmesan from the grocery store. However, these specialty booths at the farmer's market are worth the extra money. They are often made on a smaller scale, which can sometimes mean better quality, a more complex taste or smell, and a lack of artificial ingredients. You'll pay more at the farmer's market for a few ounces of cheese, but it might be worth it. As one Reddit user said of their typical farmer's market haul, we buy olive oil from a local producer, butter from a cheesemaker, mushrooms, pork, honey, fruit, bread, chard, and lettuces. Another user responded describing one of their favorite products to buy at the farmer's market. I love the homemade, usually goat milk soaps I can get at my local market. They smell better, last longer, and are just generally better than commercial. Getting your soap at the market is another way to spice up your shopping trip, all while supporting small businesses selling there. You may think of the farmer's market as a place with fresh, organic food. However, assuming that every item you come across is non-GMO, cage-free, pesticide-free, or free-range is a mistake. Like the grocery store, not everything you find at the farmer's market is organic. However, thinking that you have to stick to organic products can also be limiting. An expert on the matter said to Food Insight, Buying organic is an option and a personal decision. Is it the only way to have safe food? No. According to the USDA, organic foods are grown and processed according to federal guidelines, addressing, among many factors, soil quality, animal raising practices, pest and weed control, and use of additives. Of course, some foods are safe to eat that are not USDA certified organic. But if organic foods are what you're looking for at the farmer's market, you should ask the vendor a few questions before purchasing something. This mistake and others come from an overarching problem. People treat the farmer's market like it was the grocery store. But by appreciating the differences between the two, we can take advantage of all that outdoor food markets have to offer. One way to do that is by stepping outside of your regular shopping list. Try something you've never had before the next time you go. According to Foodprint, there is a handful of rare summer fruits you should be able to get at most farmers' markets. There are currants, bright small berries that grow on a vine. There are ground cherries, those small fruits that look individually wrapped in their own parchment paper packages. 
Then there are the crossbred stone fruits, such as pluots, plum cots, and apriums. The farmer's market is a great place to try one of these fruit hybrids. Sunchokes are tan, knobby-looking roots that look like oversized ginger. These plants are eaten and cooked in methods similar to potatoes. There are kyoja beets, which look normal on the outside but are filled with a beautiful pink and red striped pattern underneath their skin. You could also try romanesco. It looks like a pointy light grain cross between cauliflower and broccoli. Yellow and green tomatoes are also commonly found at the farmer's market. All of this produce may taste a little different than you expect, but it's worth trying. Going late to the farmer's market is one way to get lower prices on what vendors are selling. Buying in bulk is another way to save money. If you get multiple versions or a handful of one item, the vendor may discount it for you. You can save the extra stuff and use it up over time. Use it to make canned goods that will last longer, host a dinner party, or share it with friends. Missing out on these bulk deals is a big mistake. A TripAdvisor reviewer who visited the farmer's market attested to this, saying, Some items were the same price as retail stores, yet many items were dirt cheap, especially in bulk. Southern Savers explains that sometimes whatever bulk deal is offered to farmer's market shoppers is the same one that was offered to the grocery store. It noted that you might get way more of one item than you intended, but offered a way around this. The site had this to say about saving on bulk produce. Strawberries, for example, are sold in 12-pound flats. During the peak season, they are $7 for a flat. That's 58 cents a pound. Think you could handle grabbing that and freezing the extras? Yeah, I thought so. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.